G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well today I thought I'd do something a little bit different uh, and it's a basically a bit of a tutorial for any new people who are watching my channel. Now, we need to be able to learn to read charts and I have gone through previously uh, where to read, uh, how to sort of read charts. Uh, so I won't spend too much time on it, but basically you've got to find whatever you know market you want to look at. So again, for me over here, I came and here I wanted Bitcoin against the USDC. So I go BTC, Bitcoin, against the US dollar. And then I went down to this one. So I went Bitstamp. So I won't worry about that. I've already got it here. And then I just simply click on here. So that is going to give me my full chart. And then I'll come over to here. So this will give me uh, this chart. Now minus these lines. These are my uh, halving lines. Oh, I don't want to delete them. I want to leave them there. But it'll basically give you this chart. And now by pulling the mouse down and all the rest of it, I can go back and see the entire history of Bitcoin, at least since it's been on uh, Bitstamp. So again, Bitstamp started trading it back in, oh, what date is that? There we go. 22nd of August, 2011, round about there. And now we can see the price. So this is number one, how you're going to get up whatever market you want. Now, you're going to have to find the tickers for certain things. Again, you might want gold. So the gold, the, the ticker for gold is uh, XAU, I think it is. And again, whatever market you're looking for. So we're going with Bitcoin because you're probably a cryptocurrency fan and that's the one we uh, mostly kind of focus on. So we got Bitcoin here. Now we just need to be able to look at charts and understand how they work. So the cycles here. So on the 22nd of August 2011, we saw Bitcoin went down. It had this one day where it randomly spiked up, came straight back down, and then started to slowly but surely make its way up. So now again, this is, you know, all of these, I'm on the days at the moment. So we can see this is the chart. Bitcoin goes up, has a retracement, goes up has retracements, goes up, has retracements. This is more a downtrend here, but now we get an accumulation phase. So this is an accumulation phase where it just basically travels sideways for, you know, it could be months, weeks, who knows. And then it starts to slowly make its way back up again. Retracement, up, bit of an accumulation phase here again, and then it goes up, bit of a retracement. Very small accumulation stage here, and then it just starts to up, Retracement, up, retracement, up, retracement, up, retracement, uh, and up. And then we go through the next bear market. So here's the next bear market all the way down to here. We have accumulation occurring down here. Pumps up, bit of retracement. COVID, so it fell right off. And then it's basically pumped up, accumulation. We got some sideways here. Bart Simpson head pattern, so pumped up, sideways, dropped off. And then from here, we've just basically been starting to move up. So that is how you need to learn to read markets and understand where it is in the cycle. The further, go, the further you can go back in a market, the better idea and picture you're going to have of how this market reacts. All markets act somewhat similar to this. Just Bitcoin, uh, it happens a whole lot faster. You know, you'd have to go through years uh, on, on other ones to you know get a better understanding of markets, traditional markets and that. Uh, this one happens a whole lot faster. It violently goes up faster, but look, it violently goes down a lot faster as well. So there you go, we've got to Bitcoin. Now, what are some indicators that we can look at that are gonna help us understand what's happening in the market in a kind of real-time terms, like what's happening right now? Now, none of these indicators are the be all and end all, but they can just offer some information. So what we wanna do is we wanna come up here. Now I'm on TradingView. Uh, depending on which uh, you know, platform you use, they can be slightly different, but they're all fairly similar. All right, so I go to indicators. Now what I wanna do down here is I wanna look for volume. Volume's a good one, so V, O, L. Volume. So I'll click on volume. Then I can get rid of that. And here we go. Down the bottom we have volume. I like to have volume and it just uh, shows me, you know, is volume on the way up? Is it on the way down? Uh, and don't get me wrong, it do, it's not the be all and end all. Just because volume is going up doesn't mean it'll continue to go up. But what I do notice at times is, you know, once volume has come down and just starts to get low and low and low, that's usually 
the time of best opportunity in the longer term not so much the short term but we can see here this was the peak of the market so volume was high and it just started to fall down and fall down and fall down and you can see that over here you know volumes fairly high here and then it just starts to taper off taper off taper off until we get to here and basically this is the most opportune time to sort of get into the markets because we can see automatically the volume really starts to pick up in here this is accumulation people getting in nice and early getting the best prices so that's what i use volume for it just gives me an indication of where things are at whether volume is increasing or decreasing and again don't just simply use volume as the only indicator you need to be able to take in all sorts of things sentiment so the fear and greed index uh, you know what part of the cycle are you in you know are things trending on social media and all the rest of it so it's it's not just one indicator that you can use but there you go that's volume all right so we don't need volume anymore at the moment we can get rid of that what are some other kind of indicators that can help us decide what's going on all right again we go here now we're going to go R S and I so it's the relative strength index or the RSI. We can get rid of that. And relative strength index, there we go. It took a little while. All right, so the way this works is this line up the top here is 70. This is uh, kind of the line between where something is bullish or sort of bearish. Now again, in the sort of immediate term. So we can see whenever something gets above sort of 70, it's considered oversold. And when something gets below 30, it's considered undervalued. So when it's trading in between, it's, you know, somewhat evenly priced. You could say, I guess, sort of 50 uh, thereabouts or maybe 45 uh, is, you know, it's true value, I guess. And if you can pick it up when it's low on the RSI, chances are it's going to pump uh, and you're going to make, you know, some profit. But again, it's not a 100% guarantee. You can't just go, rightio, it's low, it means it's not going down. Because we can see here, the RSI jumps all over the place here. But this isn't a bear market where prices were just getting lower and lower and lower. It spent a bit of time down here. And again, we can see here, it spent a lot of time up there because that was uh, the bull market. So the relative strength index uh, is one you can have a look at. And again, you've got to take in you know, all the factors. Where in the cycle are we? Again, is this thing that you're looking at trending? Uh, is it popular at the moment? Is it high on the RSI? Is it low on the RSI? If it's low on the RSI and it's in a bull market, it's probably a good time to buy because it's most likely going to pump. If it is low on the bear market or even high on the bear market, uh, it doesn't really matter. Things are going to go down anyway. But if they're high on uh, high on the uh, RSI, chances are it's really going to have a uh, significant uh, dump after that. But again, nothing guaranteed. These are just indicators. They don't tell you everything that you need to know. They just give you an indication of whether it might be a good time to buy, whether it might be a good time to sell. But then you have to, again, understand the markets and everything else that's going on. You know, is it trending? Is it popular? Uh, is there been good news? Has there been bad news that came, that has been out? All sort of things like that. All right. So that's the RSI now. MACD. So M-A-C. And we go MACD. So the MACD is a little bit like the RSI, but not quite. Again, we have this neutral line in the middle, uh, and when it's above, it means it's bullish, and when it's down below, it means it's bearish. It means it's uh, selling off. So again, none of these indicators by themselves are the be-all and end-all. I just need to stress that. You know, you need to take a an overall view of a whole stack of things. You know, the bigger picture. These are just things that can give you an idea of where something is uh, you know in real time ie right now uh, but again you need to understand all the other fundament fundamentals of charting and all the rest of it look in all fairness I don't use the MACD a lot uh, but it is something that you can use all right so here's the ones that I really like to lose so we are on the daily candles for Bitcoin so I come up to indicators 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, oh God, which one am I looking for right now? That's right, MOV. Got a little bit lost there. So what I'm looking for is the moving averages. So down to here, I click on moving average. Now I've got one. I actually want three of them. So I'm going to click on it a second time. And you can see they're showing up here. There's my first moving average. There's my second moving average. And I'm going to click it on a third time. There's three moving averages. And these are the moving averages uh, that I use specifically on the daily. All right, so we go over here. But now what we need to do is they're all exactly the same. So we need to change these up a bit. So I go to the first one and I come across to here to settings. So the first one, what I want to do is length. We're going to put five zero. So this is going to be our 50 day moving average. Come over to style. We can use this. Click on there, go to the color and I'll go green. Because this means uh, if it's above the 50 day moving average, things are super bullish at the moment. All right, sweet. Get rid of that one. Now we come over here to our second one, back to this uh, little cog thing here, it's the settings. Now we come over here, we can change the color and we're gonna go yellow. Because if things are getting uh, yellow, it means they're probably a little bit bearish at the moment. But look, that's the, you know, if it's in a bull market and it's bearish, that's a great opportunity to buy. But anyway, we'll click on the yellow. Now we're gonna come back to inputs over here. And now we're gonna go 100. So this is now the 100 day moving average. So we go, okay. So now we've got two different moving averages there. So we can see the green one is our 50 day moving average. The yellow one is our 100 day moving average. Now we come over here to the last one. Again, we click on the settings. Now we go to length. This time we're gonna go 200. Now we're gonna come over to style. Click on the color. We're going to go red for this one because this is super bearish. If we're down here, uh, this is bearish. But again, in a bull market, that is the you know it's the best opportunity if you can get it down there to buy it. So really, I could flip these around the other way, but for now, we'll just leave them as is. All right. So now we can see these moving averages. So the green is the 50-day moving average. So this is the average price uh, for 50 sort of days. And then the yellow is the 100 day moving average and the red is the 200 day moving average. Now, if we zoom out in a bull market, and so the bull market sort of started back here uh, and let's say, all right, 13, 4th of November, 2015. Now it actually did start a little bit back here, I guess you could say. But for here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch this red line. So the 200 day moving average. So Bitcoin came down and touched this 200 day moving average a couple of times here. Doesn't do it too often, but when it does, is when you are buying at the best price, based on past history. We can see it stays well above it for quite some time, comes back down, and it actually dips below the 200 day moving average. So that uh, can happen on occasions, but is somewhat rare in a bull market not uh, in, in a bear market. So again, then we can see the 200 day moving average, Bitcoin gets fairly close here, but not quite, doesn't touch it. And then it doesn't touch uh, again until we're in the next bear market. So there was the cycle high, and then it starts to come down and it dips below. And then all of a sudden, the, they actually flip. So the 200 day moving average stayed way down below. And then after that, it stayed way above. So that's some pretty good uh, indicators that you can use. Now, what we can do here, is, sorry, I'll get to where we are now. All right. So this is where it crossed over here. So the 50 day moving average, uh, it touches the 50 day moving average quite of, of, often, but we're not even at the 50 day moving average at the moment. We're well above it. So we're in super sort of bullish territory at the moment. So again, if it were to pull back, the 50 day moving average would not be a bad place to buy, but it could go down to the 100 day moving average. Now it does touch the 100 day moving average a number of times through a bull run. So this really would be the ideal to place to you know deploy most of your capital if you're gonna put in. Because if it comes down and touches this, uh, again, it's the most uh, 
opportunity that you can have unless it's one of the rare occasions where it comes down and touches the 200 day moving average so for me i have mine set that if it comes down to the 100 day moving average that's where i'm really going to dump you know whatever money i have into bitcoin uh, i also have it set for if it comes and touches the 50 day moving average that some goes in but not a whole lot because that's not you know the most uh gains to be made uh as we can see here you know it regularly goes up and uh, above and below the 50-day moving average quite regularly but again since the bull market started which was technically here where everything aligned uh, the yellow is really more likely to happen uh, and is a pretty good opportunity it hasn't touched this 200-day moving average for some time but I can almost guarantee that at some stage it's going to all right so that is on the dailies now you can come over here and you can change to days, weeks, months, and all the rest of it. And that's not a problem. We'll just stay on the days for now. And I'm going to get rid of these moving averages. So I simply come over here and I go to the X. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to get rid of it. Now what I want to do, I'm going to come over here. And what I'm going to do is go to the weekly. So here's another indicator that I like to use. All right. So now we're going to come to indicators. And we're going to go E, uh, I think it's, sorry, EX. Here we go, moving average exponential. This is the one that I'm looking for. All right. So we click on that. Now, we're going to go over here, go over to settings, because this is on the weekly. So not the daily, this is the weekly settings now what we want to do is we can what color do we want to make this let's just stick with blue blue will be fine all right inputs this is on the weekly so what we want to do here is go to 21. so this is the 21 week exponential moving average and what we can see here is it's very similar uh, to the other moving averages but in a bull run Bitcoin regularly comes down and bounces off this but it rarely ever ever goes below in a bull run now it did wick below here but the candle body itself didn't close below so this is another good uh, indicator to use to see where the bar where the market is again this is so what we could consider sort of really oversold and super bullish and now it comes down to touch the mean greatest uh, opportunity to buy it's unlikely to go lower it can't you know it does wick lower on occasions but really it almost never has a candle body closing below so it's the 21 week exponential moving average so if we simply drag across we can see where we are oh sorry i moved that uh, i'm gonna have to fix that up later that's all right so we can see this is really where the bull run kind of started around about here and we can see we've stayed above come down touched it came up come down touched it and now we are well above at the moment so really the 21 week exponential moving average is at fifteen thousand four hundred and fifty dollars so if bitcoin is to dip down and touch this price that is generally going to be a great buying opportunity all right, ladies and gentlemen, so there's some of the indicators that I use. Now, again, I don't use any of them solely. Uh, none of them by themselves are the be all and end all. You still need to understand if you're in a bull market, if you're in a bear market, you know, has there been good news that has been out lately? Has there been bad news that has come out lately? All those kind of things need to be taken into account. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. And I'll see you next time.